I would like to take you on to another important model, another important, very commonly used uh, model, which is called the logistic regression. One homework I would like to give you is, in linear models, we never implement linear models in production. What we implement is a variant of that, which is called lasso or ridge. These two techniques, they go under the name of regularization. They are called, all models are actually regularized. Re regularization is a way of controlling the behavior of the algorithms which are creating these models for you. Regularization helps you to prevent you from getting into overfit zone, getting into very complex models. Uh, what I would advise you to is, just go and read about them. You may not be able to grasp the whole thing unless you have a prior experience in all these things. You may not be able to grasp Lasso and Rich. So what we implement is one of these two. Both of them are uh, linear models with uh, what you call uh, this thing, regularization building. Ridge regression helps you to eliminate unnecessary dimensions. It's also used for dimensional reduction. Litty reduction. This one does not eliminate any dimensions, but it makes them almost close to useless dimension. Any useless dimensions, it tries to suppress the influence of the useless dimension on the target by converting the coefficients very close to zero, but it doesn't make them zero. Now I'm going to take you to a technique, a model algorithm called logistic regression. Uh, we call it logistic regression. The word regression is misleading here. You're not going to predict any values. You're going to do classification. This is only for classifications. It is not for predictions. The reason the word regression is used is underneath this algorithm, underneath this model is actually a linear model. That's why it's called. This. Now imagine you're working in a bank, you're a data scientist in a bank and your management has asked you to come out with a model which will help you to predict whether a person who's applying for a loan, is he likely to become a defaulter or a good customer? Will he return the loan or will he be a default? So you have to build a model for that. So can you tell me some of the attributes that you'd like to collect, which will help you to predict whether it's going to be defaulter or non-defaulter? Income, expenditure, blah, 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 right? Let's take one simple case of income. So of course, it also depends on various other parameters, like loan amount, loan duration, blah, 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 so on. So let's take only income part. On this income part, amongst other dimensions that you have, on this income part, when you do an analysis of this, you find a very interesting pattern. And the pattern is, the defaulters are generally, you know, on the lower income side, the defaulters you find are on lower income side, defaulters indicated by red. And as you go towards higher income side, the density of defaulter falls, which actually in reality is opposite. All high income groups, you see a lot of uh, good customers here. Okay, a lot of people have returned their loan on time, so on and so forth. But you also see them here. It's not that they're completely gone, but you also see them here. So I've taken one attribute. There are many attributes. I'm studying just one attribute. On this one attribute, I'm finding that more defaulters are concentrated towards lower income side, very few on the higher income side. More non-defaulters are on the higher income side and very few of them on the low, lower income side. Now, I, I want to convert this pattern which I'm seeing in my data, some kind of clustering which I'm seeing in the data. I told you patterns means clusters also. I want to make use of this and build my model. I say, okay, let me build a model where this axis represents probability of non-defaulter. You could have taken a defaulter also, non-defaulter. So if probability of somebody being non-defaulter is 0.7, then probability of him being defaulter will be 0.3 because probability has to come to 1, okay? So you can take any class. I'm taking non-defaulter. And the other thing which I do here is all the non-defaulters, I'm going to encode them as 1. All the defaulters, I'm going to encode them as 0. <laughs> Once again, it doesn't have to be this way. It can be the other way also. Now, when I do this, what this model, linear model tells me is, what the linear model which I built on this, it tells me is, as you, the income increases, probability of that person being non-defaulter increases. 
that's what we are observing in this cluster as the income increases probability of any person being non defaulter increases as the income decreases the probability of person being non defaulter increases yeah that's what we are seeing here so this i want to convert into linear model so when i do that i get this line okay this line and this line is of the form y equal to mx plus c where x is your x is your income and uh, uh, m is the slope of this line with the horizontal axis but the problem with this approach is your probability model a line goes to infinity from minus infinity to plus infinity so but probability cannot be infinity right line goes from minus infinity to plus infinity in fact it can't even be zero it can't even be one probability is always in between so the line doesn't help us because it can go beyond in for two infinity minus infinity on both sides so what we do is we convert this line into an s curve where the s curve is called the sigmoid curve also goes with the name logistic how do you convert this into a s curve you feed this y equal to mx plus this expression you feed into the equation e power <coughs> minus mx plus c this function is called some people call it log it some people call it logistic function this function has a beautiful property the property is it goes towards zero and becomes zero at only at infinity so it never becomes zero for all practical reason similarly it goes towards one and becomes one only at infinity so it remains between zero and one for infinite range of your values of x that's what we want because that is what probability is it remains between zero and one okay so this model is called logistic regression the reason why it's called regression is underneath this model is a linear stuff but otherwise this is my equation of this whole model right now 